Setting up a vest can seem pretty daunting as there are a ton of different settings and parameters to set and they all depend on the specific hardware that you are using. So everyone's settings will be a bit different. Vests are a bit intimidating because we use phrases like programming a vest, but there really isn't any programming involved at all. It's more like following a piece of software and plugging in a few numbers. I mean, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but for all intents and purposes, we're just plugging in a few numbers. The vest tool has changed quite a bit in the past year, so an updated vest tutorial I feel like would be very helpful at this point. Uh, you will need to download the vest tool to configure your settings. There is a download link in the description. We'll put that down there for you. Uh, and today we are going to go over how to set up a single setup as well as a dual motor setup. So let's jump right into this video because this video is going to be pretty long. I really don't want this thing to be like an, <laughs> like an hour long or anything. So for your hardware setup, when it comes to using vests, you do need one vest per motor. So if you do plan on using two motors, be prepared that you will need two vests as well. For simplicity's sake, let's just start with a single vest setup and we'll move on to the dual vest setup in a little bit. First off, we'll need to plug in the three phase wires from your motor to your VESC. The order of these wires does not matter at all, so don't get hung up on the colors uh, or which way to plug them in. You're not going to hurt anything. Next, you want to plug in your motor's six-pin sensor wire into your VESC. Depending on your motor, the sensor cable connector does differ in size, so you may need to adapt the smaller version uh, to the larger connector with the Hall sensor adapter cable. In this case, I'm using the M-Board 6355 motor, which all come with the proper size cable by default, so you won't need any extra adapters. Refer to your specific VESC's wiring diagram to figure out which port is which. In our case, this is the port we'll use for the motor sensor wire. If your motor is using a 5-pin sensor connector, you can still use it. You'll just have to make a little adapter. I'll leave a link in the description for instructions on how to do that as well. If your motor doesn't have a sensor cable at all, you can still run your motor sensorless as well. Once your sensor wire is connected, go ahead and connect your power switch and your battery to your VESC. And finally, you'll want to attach your remote's receiver. If you're using a remote that uses a UART port, then you'll attach that using this port right here. And if you're using a remote using a PPM cable, you'll use this cable over here. And the very last thing you'll need to plug in is the USB cable. One side goes into your VESC and the other end into your computer. As far as hardware goes, for a single motor setup, this thing is pretty much ready to go. So to begin programming your VESC, launch the VEST tool program. Next, power on the VESC. Be sure that your battery is fully charged and is a reliable power source. A sudden power outage during programming can damage your VESC, so be very careful. Click on Auto Connect. In the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a light green confirmation message. One of the first things you'll need to do is update your firmware. Please take an extra minute to do this. Please pay attention and read everything very carefully. Uploading the incorrect firmware version for your hardware version will brick your VESC and void any kind of warranty you may have had. In this case, I'm using a VESC with hardware version 4.12. Make sure to double check which hardware version you're using before proceeding. Uh, over here on the left hand side, click on the firmware tab, click onto your hardware version, and then select the default VESC firmware file. Click here on the update button to update your VESC's firmware, and be patient while your firmware is uploaded to your VESC. Once it is complete, be sure that you listen to the prompt and wait at least 10 seconds while the VESC reboots and switches over to the new firmware. Disconnecting power immediately after upload will damage your VESC, so be really careful and just take a few seconds and make sure you're paying attention. Once the firmware has been updated, you'll need to reconnect your VESC to the VESC tool using the auto connect button once again. We'll click over here on the setup motor FOC button. The first prompt we are greeted with is to select how large your motor is. Pretty much all electric skateboard motors will fall under the medium category. Next, select how many cells your battery is. I'm using a 10S 3P battery, so I will select 10, not 30. We need to enter in how many cells are in series, not the total cells in your pack. We're using 10S, so 10. This particular battery is made with Samsung 30Q cells, which all have a capacity of 3,000 milliamp hours. Because we have three cell groups in parallel, I'll multiply 3,000 by three to get 9,000 milliamp hours or nine amp hours. Hit next. And this window only really matters if you're using remotes that have integrated displays, but it doesn't hurt to fill it out anyway, so I usually just fill it out. Um, I don't currently have anything attached to my setup at the moment, just so you guys can see everything a bit easier, but if I had everything assembled properly, I would be using a 16T motor pulley, a 36T wheel pulley, and a set of M-Board's 97mm wheels. You want to enter the teeth count and wheel size that match your parts, of course, don't just copy my parts 100%. Once we have all of that connected, hit Run Detection. This process does spin your motors, so make sure that there isn't anything in the way. 
during the detection. Also, don't be alarmed, but it will make some unpleasant noises during the detection as well. This is completely normal, so don't freak out. You're not breaking your motor. It's just part of the process. Next, you'll need to verify whether or not your motor is spinning the correct way. Click the forward button to get a preview of what a forward throttle signal would look like. If your motor is spinning the correct way, then you can hit finish. If it is spinning the wrong way though, check the inverted box to change the direction. Click forward again to confirm the direction change. And once your motor is spinning the correct way, hit finish. We aren't quite done yet. We do still have to change a few things on the, on the back end. So click over to the general tab under the motor settings category. You'll be greeted with another general tab located across the top. We don't need to change anything on this tab though, so we can go on to the current tab. There are a few things you need to change here. During motor detection, the motor current settings will be filled in automatically, but I typically push these numbers a tad bit to squeeze a bit more performance out of my motors. Be warned though, the farther you push your motors, the shorter their lifespan will become, along with running a lot hotter. In this case, I'll change the motor max and motor max brake to 60 and negative 60. These dictate the acceleration and braking power your motor has. And then next we need to set your battery current max. This ensures that your motor won't pull more power than your battery can handle. Here's where your numbers will start to differ than mine for sure. You'll need to check your battery's specs to find out what specific continuous discharge rating your battery has. So, um, or how many amps you can consistently pull out of your battery safely. In my case, I'm using the 10S3P, maybe the Samsung 30Q cells. Uh, each cell can handle a continuous discharge of 15 amps, and because I'm using a 3P battery, I can multiply 3 by 15 to get 45, so I will enter 45. Next, we need to set the amount of amps that will be fed back into the battery during regenerative braking. Each 30Q cell can handle about 4 amps uh, charge current, so I'll set it at negative 12 because we do have 3 cells in parallel. You'll definitely want to locate a data sheet for your specific cells that are inside your battery pack um, to make to find the safe charge rate and discharge rate. You don't want to copy my numbers exactly unless you're using an identical battery um, because every battery is different with the different cells and stuff. Next, we'll need to set the voltage at which point the vest will begin to slow down and then totally stop operating, protecting your battery. You can use the battery cutoff calculator if you want, but I do tend to stretch my batteries a little further than the suggested. So to use the calculator, you enter the amount of cells you're using, so in our case 10, then hit apply. In my case, it recommends a voltage of 34 and 31, um, which to me seems a bit high, but that's what it recommends. You may wanna do your, some independent research as many people have different ideas and opinions when it comes to the lowest voltage you should bring an 18650 cell down to, but I like my battery to totally stop operating at about 2.9 volts per cell, and because we are using a 10S battery, 2.9 volts times 10S equals 29 volts. And I like my vest to begin to slow my board down as I get closer to a dead battery, so I have a bit of warning before my battery is, again, totally dead. I usually add about two or three volts to my cutoff end voltage, um, so I'll enter 32 volts here. Remember, if you're using a 6S or 10S battery, your numbers will be completely different, so make sure you're doing your own math. Next, we'll move on to the RPM tab. We do want to change the ERPM limit as the default is a bit high. Uh, to keep the vest from overexerting itself, we'll limit it to about 60,000 and negative 60,000. I found this to be pretty much as much as hardware version 4.12 can really handle. Setting this number any higher can damage your vest. But if you are using a VESC 6, then you will want to reach out to the vendor to get the most recommended values, um, as VESC 6 can handle a much higher ERPM than VESC version 4s. Um, usually, I believe the VESC 6s are around 100,000, but you do want to check with your specific vendor uh, because, again, every vendor is different and every piece of hardware is a little different. So just double check with them and find out what that limit is to protect your VESC from overexerting itself. At this point, we can go ahead and save our work and write the motor configuration. Now that our motor settings are done, we need to set up the input method. If you're using a UART port based remote, you do not have to do this step. You are complete and do not have to do any further setup. But if you are using a PPM based remote, we do have a little work to do. To start, head back to the welcome screen and hit the setup input button. Click next. Next, we'll choose an input type. In our case, we are using a basic PPM remote, so we'll select PPM input. So this part is pretty simple. Using your controller, push the throttle forward and back, and then you should see the signal level moving back and forth. At this point though, the VESC tool should have turned your motors off so you can configure your remote without spinning them. Uh, but just be sure your motors are clear just in case they start to spin up. Um, in the event that they are still moving, drop down this menu and then select off. The signal level should push all the way to 100% as you move the throttle forward and come down all the way to negative 100% as you uh, pull the throttle, throttle down. Right from the start, you can see my levels are definitely not correct, so a remote calibration will be needed. 
The easiest way to do this is to click the reset button over here, then push the throttle all the way forward for a couple of seconds, then push the throttle all the way back for a couple of seconds. And you should notice that the numbers here automatically adjust as you push the throttle forward and back. Once the new numbers populate, click apply. Now, when you push the throttle forward and backward, the signal level just about hits 100 and negative 100%, with no input setting at 0%. Hit next. The next, make sure your controller type is set to current, no reverse with brake. Then click right configuration to VESC. Click next, and then finish. And just be sure everything has been saved properly, click the right motor and right app configuration buttons. Click the disconnect button and disconnect VESC from power and your computer. And that's it, you've successfully configured your VESC, but wait, there is more. If you are using two VESCs, there are a few differences in the setup process. The hardware side of things for a dual motor setup is a bit different. Like I said earlier, you do need a VESC for each motor. So the dual motor setup, you'll need two VESCs. You still need to connect the phase wires and sensor wires uh, from each motor to each VESC like before, but we do need to add a couple extra cables. We're going to need to supply power to both VESCs using one battery, so we need to split the power to each of the VESCs using a dual VESC adapter. One end plugs into the battery, while the other two ends plug directly into each of the VESCs. We also need to repeat the signal coming from the receiver to both of the VESCs. Uh, this can be done easily by running a CAN bus cable between the two VESCs. So at this point, you should have all your phase wires, your sensor wires, and receiver connected, as well as your dual VESC connector and CAN bus cable. Before we begin, plug in each of your VESCs and update the firmware on them separately to be sure that they can communicate properly. If your two VESCs are running two separate firmware versions, there can be some kind of issues, so make sure that they are on the same. Follow the steps we outlined uh, during the single motor setup to get your firmware updated. Um, just do that twice. And now that we have everything connected, locate your VESC that has the receiver connected and plug that one into your computer via USB. Supply power to both your VESCs. And then like before, click Auto Connect. And exactly like the single VESC setup, click Setup Motors FOC, Medium, fill out the battery type and capacity and gear ratio info, and then click Run Detection. Again, this will spin up both motors, so be sure that everything is clear and nothing's gonna get hit by your wheels or your motors. And then brace yourself for the horrible high-pitched frequency once again. Your detection results will appear like before. Click OK. Now test each of your motors like before by making sure that each move in the correct direction. Again, you do that exactly like we discussed previously. All of that was pretty much exactly the same, but we do have some settings that are going to be a bit different. Click back into the general motor settings and tab over to the current settings. Motor current max and motor current max brake are set the same as before. Now here are where things change. Your battery current max needs to be divided by two since we are using two VESCs. So otherwise we'd be pulling double the amperage out of the battery risking damage. So in our case, we would have entered 45 amps, but this time we will enter 22 and a half amps. So that way when each of our VESCs pull 22 and a half amps each, we're still pulling the same 45 amps from our battery um, altogether. So for current max regen, we want to divide this number by two as well. So instead of 12, we'd be entering six. Save your settings by clicking right motor configuration button, then fill out the voltage tab the same way you would with a single VESC. Enter the same values into the ERPM settings as before. Now after you've written the settings to your VESC, you can click into the second VESC connected via CAN bus down here. Fill all the settings we just went through the exact same way you did with the first VESC. And if you are using a UART based remote, you again, you get to skip this step. If you're using a PPM based remote, we do need to set this up again. We won't go over all the calibration stuff again, just everything that is different. So click back into the welcome screen and begin the input setup wizard again. This time it will greet you with a slightly different beginning screen. This time you need to tell the VESC tool which VESC your receiver is plugged into. In this case, my receiver is plugged into the VESC that is connected via USB. If your receiver is connected to the VESC that is connected with the CAN bus cable, you select that one. Finish setting up the PPM mapping like we did before, and that's it. Everything should be working at this point and ready to ride. There are a couple of things you should keep in mind though to avoid some confusion. Um, if you are having trouble getting your VESC tool to respond to your remote, be sure uh, your app to use settings are correct. Be sure to select the correct receiver type in the drop down menu. Um, and then to remember, remember to consistently save your work by writing uh, your motor and app settings as you go. Um, a lot of times it's very easy to set some settings and then move on to the next thing and then forget to save your work. And then if you look back, it, it, it's not there. So make sure you're saving your work as you go. And if you are having trouble getting your remote to respond, be sure you don't have your receiver plugged in backwards. This happens pretty much every time I do a PPM based uh, receiver, I get it backwards. So um, 
just switch it around and it should start working. And that is pretty much it. These settings really have worked really well for us. So let us know if you have any questions or if there's something that we covered today that still isn't clear, we're happy to answer as many questions as we can in the comment section. And we've left links in the description for all the downloads, the vests, the cables, and everything that you might need to get your build done. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, subscribe, we have tons of weekly electric skateboard videos coming in the near future. We got builds coming up. We have a ton of different stuff that we're, we wanna show you guys. So please hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next one.